Hi everyone, Phil Rowley and welcome to my tying bench. You know I love suggestive flies and one of my favorites is the Kerry Special, especially when I'm using it to imitate migrating dragonfly nymphs. This version, the Alaskan Kerry, worked very well for me when I fished those great trout lakes up around Palma and Wasilla in Alaska. So join me at the bench and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to tie this fly so you can add it to your box. If you like this video, of course, hit that like button. If you like the channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to get notified about future videos, hit the bell as well. And check out the comments section below where you'll find the recipe and all the tools and materials I use to tie this fly. So come along, join me, and I'll show you how I tie the Alaskan Carry. I love suggestive flies. The Kerry Special is one of my favorites. This version, subsequently named the Alaskan Kerry, worked extremely well when I was fishing the Matsu area lakes in Alaska. Dragonfly nymphs were on the move and the rainbows there took this fly with gusto. Here is the short list of materials you will need to tie my Alaskan Kerry. So I'm now going to tie you the Alaska Carry, and this is a variation of the good old Carry Special, and it got its name because I uh, was filming a TV show with a new fly fisher up in Alaska, and dragonflies were on the move, and a Carry Special, simple as it is, is one of my favorite suggestive dragonfly nymph patterns, and this fly has worked worked well on that occasion, and has worked for me elsewhere when I want to just cast and strip with a often a slow sinking line like a clear intermediate like a camel lux or uh, an aqualux two and just strip these flies back four to six inch strips prolong pauses to make this fly breathe and move so into the jaws of my uh, regal here I've placed a Daiichi 1710 uh, two extra long uh, nymph hook size eight size I tie it most often in and we're just going to attach the the color the thread coloration is entirely up to you. You could tie with black, or olive, or green, uh, whatever you'd like. Probably even do red or orange for a little hot spot. But uh, the olive was nearby, so that's what we're tying with. So we're just going to coat the shank with tying thread. Work our way down to the back of the hook, and for the tail. We're going to use the tail and the hackle is not with pheasant rump but with dyed guinea, this uh, dyed green guinea. Um, if you can, I like the ones with the small dots, of course I don't have that today so we're just using regular guinea, but I like the small dots. I just like the variation, variegation um, that uh, these guinea fibers provide. And so we're going to make a tail, so I'm just going to strip off a clump of guinea fiber. Ignore my band-aid for my beat up thumb with a lost an argument with a boat anchor and we're just going to strip off a clump and we're going to tie in a uh, a tail that's about half the shank length or so sticking out the back like so nice and gathered and we'll just continue to secure the butts all the way up the shank very simple fly you can bang these off in no time so we get that tied in for the body, we're going to use a variegated chenille, black and brown, dark coloration. I've stripped off one end to expose the core. It's coming around with a soft loop. Tie that in place. Secure it up the shank. And then stop my tying thread about one hook eye width back from the hook eye. And now I'm going to, at this point, I tie in my hackle for the front because I get a nice firm purchase. I don't have to uh, worry about uh, trying to get a bunch of materials dealt with in a very small space, tying off the body, tying in the, uh, the hackle at the front. Um, so I find it an opportune time to tie it in at this time. And I've selected another guinea hackle with the fibers that are just slightly longer than the shank of the hook. So we're just going to hold that in place on top of the hook and we're tying it in wet fly style so what, what I mean what do I mean by that well let me just get this tied in and I'll explain it 
I've, I've tied that feather in so that the most prominently marked side of the feather is facing front or the convex side. So when I wind this feather around um, the shank of the hook to form the hackle, the fibers are naturally going to flow backwards. So that's what we want to do. We want to tie it wet fly style, I call it. So I'm just going to bring that thread right back up just to where I tied it off. And you'll notice I also tied in as a little bit of bare thread, bare stem exposed. That's going to help me, what I call, aim the feather and get it positioned right when I go to make the initial wraps to form the hackle. So now with the chenille, we're just going to wind this in close touching turns. One wrap directly in front of the other. Give it a little tug every once in a while to make sure we're good and tight. And just wind this forward. Right up to the tying thread. Over the top a couple of times. Pull it back. A couple in front to lock. Carefully reach in. And then we're just going to advance our thread forward. And I'm going to take a positioning turn. And then I'm going to attach my hackle pliers to the tip of the feather. Come up and I'm going to pre-train or sweep these fibers back. Just come in and sort of get them predisposed to flowing backwards. And we're just going to make one wrap, two wraps. That's all you need. Nice and sparse. You don't want to have an overdressed fly because the fibers will start to fight each other. And now I'm going to come in and sweep everything back. I have not trimmed off the excess yet. By doing this, I kind of lock that hackle in. And if the stem is not too, I'll give it a shot, but if the stem is not too stiff, a little down pressure and a sharp forward snap, and you break that hackle out of the way, and because you locked it down and use that tight th thread pressure, you can snap that hackle off. And now all we have to do is, uh, we'll, we'll do some more training on the hackle in a second, is just take a little super glue, Make sure that hackle is distributed around the shank, and it is. And again, hold it back. Build up that neat little head at the front. Take our whip finisher. Finish building the head. Disengage, and your Alaskan carry is complete. All we're going to do now is sort of and play with the hackles and the beauty of these soft hackles is you can come in kind of pinch everything down or perhaps brush it with a toothbrush and that frees up the, the fibers from fighting with each other and just come in and give that a good pinch and that's basically it your Alaskan carry the two fibers there they're deciding to play on their own but very simple fly. We're just going to strip and move this through. We got a couple fibers there. We'll just stroke those out of the way. They'll train back nice and it's very simple. And when they're on dragonflies, just casting and stripping this fly can work really well. So there you have it. The finished Alaskan carry. Dead simple. Give it a try. The next time you think dragonfly nymphs might be on the menu, these animated feathers, it just pulses and breathes and looks good to eat. Be prepared for a good solid tug. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. Com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.